How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about John Carpenter's Halloween uh, from 1978 directed by John Carpenter and starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, and of course we can't forget about PJ Souls. Anyway, um, I've been covering uh, Halloween movies, uh, that is Halloween the Holiday, all month long, and this is the last one of that set. Now, I'll probably be doing a bunch more Halloween movies. Uh, I kind of watched more than I could review, so a few of them will spill into uh, November, but that's not too bad. But anyway, the last movie I review right before this weekend when Halloween comes has to be the classic, the original, John Carpenter's Halloween. And this is the film that started the 80s slashers. It wasn't the first slasher. Um, you can argue which one that was. But this is the film that was a huge hit and started the 80s slasher boom. It's where you get, you know, all this stuff spinning out of. This also is important because this is the movie that kick-started John Carpenter's uh, directorial uh, career. His first two movies, uh, Dark Star, which was a uh, student film, and then Assault on Precinct 13, which is really good but very underrated. Uh, go check that out if you haven't. Uh, both of those really good movies, but this one was his first smash success. And it's uh, all those great movies that we got later, The Thing, Escape from New York. Uh, that's because this movie put his name on the map. So anyway, uh, without further ado, I'm going to talk a little bit about the plot. Uh, no spoilers for those of you who haven't seen it, but I want you to have a basic understanding of the plot and what this movie's about. But that being said, if you haven't seen it, uh, just go and watch it. If you're a horror fan at all and you haven't seen the original Halloween, just go and watch it. Um, make sure it's the 1978 Halloween because uh, at this point there's the Rob Zombie remake, also called Halloween, and the new Blumhouse movie, which is good, but it's a sequel to this movie that's also just called Halloween. So make sure you're getting John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978 when you uh, pick it up. Anyway, the plot. So this movie, you begin with probably one of the most famous uh, long shots in movie history. Uh, you get a point of view shot of someone looking in the windows at this house. This girl and her boyfriend are there. The boyfriend leaves and the point of view camera goes into the house, uh, picks up a knife and a mask, and goes into the girl's room and stabs her, killing her. The camera then leaves the house, and you jump to the second shot, which is uh, a little boy. You see that the character you've been following, the killer, is actually a small child. His parents run up to him. He's standing in the front yard, dazed and blank and not really saying anything and holding a bloody knife. And you get the, the famous line, the parents go up, Michael, Michael. So this is young Michael Myers. He's just killed his sister and he's going to be sent away to an asylum. Um, now after that, lots and lots of time has passed and Michael Myers has been mute and not doing anything. His psychiatrist, Dr. Samuel Loomis, played by Donald Pleasance, is going to the asylum to make sure that his transfer to the new asylum goes smoothly. Now, uh, if you uh, know your uh, horror history, uh, Sam Loomis is the same name as the protagonist uh, from Psycho. Uh, a lot of people have this fan theory that after his encounter with Norman Bates, that made Sam Loomis want to study psychiatry, and the fan theory is that they're the same character. Now, this doesn't really line up with what's said about him in the Psycho sequels, but I really like this idea. Um, 
that they're somehow connected, especially because Psycho to Halloween is, you know, basically the road of establishing what a slasher would become in uh, film history. But anyway, uh, Sam Loomis goes there to oversee the transfer, and when him and this nurse pull up to the facility, they see that something's gone wrong and the patients are wandering the grounds. Apparently, they've had a massive breakout. Uh, he gets out of the car to go and open the gate and see what's happens, and Michael Myers runs into the car, steals it, and drives away. So Michael Myers is escaped, and Sam Loomis knows he's heading back to his hometown. Now after that, you get the introduction for your third character, Laurie Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. And although there had been final girls before her, this is the performance that set the final girl archetype for the modern slasher as well. She's smarter than her friends, she doesn't party or act out as much. There is actually a scene where she smokes something, uh, but most people tend to forget that's in there. Um, but yeah, she is the, uh, the more level-headed person, and it uh, sets the path for Final Girls, although technically she's not the first, but it does help define the trope in this. Uh, but anyway, her father's a realtor, and on her way to school, she has to drop off the key to the Myers house. Someone's coming to look at it, so she has to go and put the key under the mat. Now, it's a simple, seemingly innocuous action that's going to set the course for her in this movie. You see, she doesn't know it, but Michael Myers is inside his old house, and he sees her when she puts the key on the mat, and that's what makes him decide to follow her. Now, in Halloween 2, they would sort of uh, change this and say that there's more of a reason, but when you get to the Blumhouse continuity, they take that away and you're left with what you can assume in the original version. And it's kind of an interesting thing, you know, Michael Myers killed his sister, had nothing really to do, and just did nothing for 15 years. When given the opportunity to escape, he simply returns to his old house and isn't really doing anything, but he sees sort of a replacement for his sister because, you know, he's alone at his house and some other girl about her age goes to his house. And that's sort of this, uh, this weird sort of minimal plot that, uh, you know, you get if you really look at it. But yeah, it's uh, really fun. But throughout the, the first act of the movie, you see Lori interacting with her friends, and this is a part that a lot of slashers would struggle with, uh, the part before all the big killings start, and you have to establish your characters, who they are and what they're doing, and just have these teenagers goofing off. Now, how Halloween does this is they make this section into sort of a stalker movie. Michael Myers is in his stolen car, driving around and following Laurie Strode, hiding behind bushes or clotheslines, and he slips in and out, and she begins to feel like she's being watched by this mysterious stranger, but not knowing if it's real or all in her head. And it makes the beginning part of this movie, before the kills, really interesting, especially just the way it's psychological, and you don't really know is he really after me? Is, is it just some guy? Who is this? Do I know him? And you start to get paranoia where you're not sure if it's real or not, and that really does help the beginning of this movie before, obviously, the, the climactic third act. Uh, but anyway, moving on to Halloween night, Lori is a babysitter. She's babysitting Tommy. One of her friends is a couple houses down, babysitting a girl named Linda, and they have another friend and her boyfriend that just kind of want to party. Now, throughout the course of the night, Michael Myers is stalking Lori and, by association, her friends. And it turns into the classic slasher movie, Michael Myers showing up, killing people, and then disappearing. Now, uh, Neighborhood is kind of a weird setting for a slasher as well. A lot of later slashers... You have to think, how do you isolate the characters? And there's no real isolation in a neighborhood because, I mean, there's several other houses around. How does someone not see it? 
And that's where you get the really cool part about Michael Myers. One of the things that makes him really special as a character. And that's the way he slides in and out like a knife. He can be somewhere, no one sees him, and he shows up cleanly and efficiently kills someone and then goes back into the shadows where you get this feeling that even though there are other people in all these houses, no one suspects a thing. And he moves so silently and so stealthily, but it's not like a ninja where there'd be like flair to it. You get the sense that Michael Myers doesn't even turn his head unless he has to. He is so stiff and minimal and robotic almost. And that's one thing that people talk about with this movie, cinematic minimalism, Michael Myers' performance, the fact that the plot is relatively small, and even in certain shots you get it where it's mostly black and there's not much in these shots. In fact, the nickname for Michael Myers that the crew gave him when they were making this movie was The Shape, because he'd simply be a shape in the background, very small and not big, and he would appear and disappear like that, and it's really great and well made, but yeah, cinematic minimalism, not a big complex plot, and letting everything move slowly and breathe with just the few elements you have, but letting it breathe and letting all these elements realize themselves because you're not bogging it down with a million other things, and it really is uh, brilliant. Um, but that being said, it's more minimal than lots of people suspect. There's not near as much gore, and there's actually um, not terribly many kills in this movie. Um, and in turn, some people are expecting a gory or over-the-top movie. Uh, you may want to wait for some of the sequels or, you know, like, say, the Friday the 13th franchise. But for what this is, you know, as a really, really cool movie, you know, it's not your... Uh, over-the-top slasher, and it's not overly gory, but it's really creepy and really dark, and you get the sense that Michael Myers could be anywhere, and the fact that you know he could be anywhere, and they set that up when he does appear with his, you know, musical cue, da da and he just pops out, it really is good and shocking. Uh, good jump scares the way they should be when, you know, Michael Myers pops up or gets up or does something like that, and it's really cool, and of course, like a lot of Carpenters, by the end of it, it basically becomes a Western. But this is one of the best horror movies of all time. This is the movie that made way for all the 80s slashers to come. Loved by critics, loved by fans. And I have to say, uh, yeah, one of the best horror movies of all time. So if you like horror in any way, and even if you're just a movie fan, I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, now anyway, um, I think I've, uh, gone on quite a bit, uh, but I, I hope this video isn't too terribly long, but I, I did want to say my piece. You know, I know that this is a, a big movie, and I'm not sure if I said anything too terribly new, but I wanted to, uh, pardon the pun, uh, take a stab at it. Anyway, um, thank you to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching, uh, to everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you, you really are helping the channel out. I do about 95% horror on this channel, so if that sounds like something that interests you, I definitely uh, recommend sticking around. Anyway, I'll put a relevant playlist down here at the bottom. That should be a uh, Halloween videos playlist for all the, all the movies that take place on this holiday. Anyway, have a good day, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon.